Salutations, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, and thank you for joining me here in TNO playing as the United Kingdom. Last time we played as the Kingdom of England and Wales, and probably Cornwall. But uh, now we have Scotland and Earth, and we now have the Great Flag back. Great. So we have a change in the air, and then we'll get two more things. So things are slowly becoming better in Scotland. There's a foggy, the skies are a little brighter, and the people aren't as angry as they used to be. Well, they're still kind of angry because they're t kind of not being very nice to us now. It seems the hatred and anger towards English in Scotland has gotten better. Well, I don't know about that. Resentment will always be there, it seems, but right now it isn't manifesting itself as it used to be. Our government slowly getting grip on the situation, and hopefully soon it'll only be a dark memory. May there be peace in the north. Yeah, eventually, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure things are actually getting better for us. Just because mine is 20% stability, Terrester 2 might not always be good for your country. You know, it is what it is. Cool. Um, I don't know if we'll actually will get any events for Ireland. So I'm just going to plan these out ahead just in case. So hopefully we can navally invade or maybe get us started back quickly. But I really have no idea. But hope you're all having a great day. Let's try to invade Cork maybe as well. Um, we're probably set to 10 max for, in terms of invasion, naval invasions, even though it is 68, so. Uh, no upgrades for that guy. Montgomery has nothing there. What can we do here? We can hold a little rally. Somewhat efficient military. We could probably do that eventually. 100% elite support. God dang, son. That's a lot. But we're probably going to lower it. Let's see. Domestic job growth. Anything else? Any other supports? Stability could be nice. No, like I said many times, but I don't really care. Uh, so... I've got to get to a few comments as well. Good. More growth is always good. Uh, we're doing well. Our GDP, our deficit is getting better every year, but we're going to thank our voters first. And figure out what we're going to do next. A second act of union. It's only 14 days. Let's do that one. Having dealt with the old government of the Scottish Republic and the Welsh breakaway, we can begin drafting a proclamation of the reunification of the United Kingdom. Our isle is no longer divided. We are once more united under one king and Margaret Thatcher's dream of England and once again bring being irrelevant. On the world stage is closer than ever to being fulfilled, and now that she rules in Britannia. So, a couple comments include yesterday that apparently Cornwall has its own separate flag. That's actually like the actual flag of Cornwall, which apparently from you guys, you guys stated that Cornwall has its own, like, kind of a strong regional patriotism about it. They're very somewhat patriotic down there in Cornwall. I've never been to Cornwall. I know nothing about Cornwall. Um, but that's pretty cool. You know, I never knew that. And that's their own flag, kind of a dark white flag, black white flag. That's kind of cool. Uh, it's probably a cross of somebody, of course, like the English flag, like the Swedish flag, like the Danish and Norwegian flags, and Finnish flag as well. That's really cool. Um, uh, yeah, and so another comment was just saying from yesterday, yeah, we hopefully we can invade the rest of the isles here. Hopefully we can. Eh, get rid of that. So, I really hope we can invade Ireland. That'd be so nice if we can. Not for the Irish, obviously, but for us, it'd be really great. You know, for us, it'd be awesome. Got plenty of influence. Uh, liquid reserves cut civilian spending still. And cut down on growth a little more. Or debt, I mean. Debt. Second act of the union. Great. So now, small government of the people. Every own state jo domestic job growth will be decreased, but every own state will get a thousand jobs. The support will decrease by 1%, huh? Um, we could do that. The royal party meeting. Meet the new boss again. Small government of pe the people. If the English are to respect the government, they must believe that the government controls over their lives is an all-time low. For Thatcher, a perfect world will indeed herald the rise of a truly small government, the one that respects localism and the full autonomy of individuals. But this is not a perfect world. While presenting ourselves as a small government to the public, we will be, in fact, snatching a power away from major companies and local cities in order to increase centralization. As with many of our lives in these dark times, oh, they are small evil necessary for saving the nation. Good. Uh, yeah. Political power, stability, we get a thousand jobs even though we lose... Domestic job growth will be decreased by 0.002%. We're going to become a trust buster. We're going to be busting all them trusts. Formation of the SOC intern. Socialist International, or SOC intern, was announced. Represents people from all over the world, or socialist parties, through a diversity of strains of left-wing thought from Russian-style Marxist-Leninism to Marxist social democracy. Has headquarters in the Far Eastern Soviet Socialist Republic, claims to have the objective of facilitating cooperation between socialist parties. Oh, boy. The turn of the Reds. Oh, huh. Led by Irkutsk, and then with the Grand Principality of Central Iberia, Siberia, the uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. And I'm glad we have the provisional commissariat of Western Russia, kind of. I'm not really glad about it, but you know, it is it is what it is there. Um, at least the Reds, they, they do have Kazakhstan and Eastern Siberia, but you know what? At least there's not completely all right for now. Let's go ahead, since we got some, you know, political power. Let's go ahead and do this some more. Loyalty is going to be at, a, oh, our current loyalty is 98%. The base loyalty is 100%, so let's just do more efficiency then. Political concessions, nah. Cool. 
Yeah, we have the political power, so we must well use it, right? Uh, what was that over there? Cool. Very good. Uh, let's see, current base is 62.5%. And our current efficiency is that exact amount. Cool. Great. Looking over at local authorities. Ooh, small decrease in economic output of jobs. The enemy within. Why are we decreasing our output? What the heck? Oh, boy. Yeah, we're really decre decreasing our output. Oh, boy, that's not good. I really don't like it. Controlling cash. Temporary effects of monetarism. We lose a lot of things. Holy cow. The road will be hard. A new dawn, a U-turn. Temporary effects. Um, I guess we'll do that one to get rid of this. We inherit a ravaged landscape where the proud seem to sh shed every value, or the pound seems to shed every value every day. Nary a street corner can be turned without finding someone asking for work. Under Thatcher, bold new solution is clear that requires no concessions to communistic pro government programs. With the erratic value of our currency being the core of the nation's ills, it must be brought to heel like the rabbit dog it is. Drawing on the sadly little-known ideals of the Austrian school, a government shall embark on a vigorous implementation of monetarism, circulating of the pound... Uh, circulation of the pound shall be subject to the strictest of controls, especially in regards to prolific government spending. Only when the private sector grows sufficiently shall we increase the circulation for all. We know the dark alternative in front of us is no viable path. Cut it down to a manageable level from social programs to taxes, and our markets will stabilize to a perfect level. Oh my gosh. We are really going to be decreasing a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness. Wait, can we do that? Controls going cash. Remove the spirit. Uh, um... Okay, Thatcher, the trust buster. Maggie, you are certain this is a good idea? You've never been against a free market before, sputtered John Biffin outside the press room. Of course, I'm not against a market, John. Don't be daft. I'm simply continuing our biggest rival, Thatcher said with a sly smile before sipping out to the brief, brief of the press. The Prime Minister put on her best smile and ignored the flashes of cameras and shouted the questions from the reporters. I'd like to first thank the nation for turning in on your favorite news decision. I hope you're all very comfortable this evening, she stated, or started eyes scanning the room. I'm delighted to tell you that your comrades and mine... Comrades, the British Parliament have had 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 several fantastically productive chats recently that will finally fear for markets as they have always ought to have been. It's always been our view that the government should keep its hand out of its business and to allow English ingenuity to drive the economy. What's now become impossible for any responsible government to ignore, however, is that there's another set of hands throttling the ability of Englishmen to compete in the market. We've elected that we must absolutely uh, end the hegemonic rule of the corporations and give that economic potential back to the talented individual individual instead. Miss Thatcher will not share authority over her party with petty corporate lobbyists. Oh no, the GDP is going to go way down then. Oh boy. As long as it doesn't go b below uh, 170, just 70 billion, I'll be okay with that. Iberian Union has issued a surprise announcement. Um, Cool. Maintains Iberian Council? Oh. Well, at least they pretend to be good. Well, you know, if they're going to lower stuff, I'm going to pretend that I don't know what's going on and I want to maybe get more GDP, more growth, because we're going to need it. Oh no. I really want to get more stability, but is it really worth it for that? Probably not. Government stability not bad, though. For now, for now. Oh, uh, we need to go all that, get all that stuff. But we're gonna keep going down this way. Plus 15 percent more armor. That's nice. Also, we're building. Wow, liquid reserves. Um, we're we're approaching two billion minus two billion in a deficit. So I'm actually gonna spend the liquid reserves now this time, just because we're gonna be losing stuff, man. Oh my goodness. A U-turn. Our reforms have been too bold. It seems like if I do this. We won't get through this part. The road will be hard. A sick child must take bitter medicine if they wish to be healthy again. Such a principle applies to economics, too. The disloyal politicians and slithering resistance has bellowed since Thatcher's rise that our reforms are too extreme, that we will ruin the lot of the working man and remove any sense of stability in the economy. Now, as employment rises and we plunge into a recession, these illiterate fools claim that they've been victim vindicated. The only thing that truly has been proven, however, is that our opponents care not, about, not a hair about economic science. The Prime Minister, as a student of free market principles, knows that such disruptions will come with the two-pronged approach of cuts in private... private privatization. But such a solution will rectify itself as a properly free market always does, and within a year we shall see the greatest period of growth in our history. A massive reduction in unemployment, an all-around boom of prosperity on the Isles. Let the traders and communists cry foul, there will be no room for them once our entrepreneurial state cements itself on the world stage. We cannot reverse course for nothing of worth doing is ever easy. A new dawn for England lose political power. Okay, we get just slightly more jobs. Okay, 0.01%, which is not bad, but I am worried that this is not going to be good for us, but you know what? We must go all the way, right? Infantry out here. Ooh, 73.29. That's not bad. 105% uh, influence. Uh, meet with industrial giants. We're going to do that immediately. Hold a speech in Parliament and visit urban centers at the same time. For even more job growth. Military training. Shame the opposition. Nope. 84%. Not bad. Not bad. 100% influence. Pretty good. Uh, we do what we must. That's basically what my motto is. Happy 1969, my friends. We're actually done with all this infantry stuff. But not really, since we have stuff we could do down here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get a Marine Division. I want to invade Ireland, so we'll see what happens. 
0.29, we are trying to increase the jobs available in the countryside and in urban areas, but obviously, we'll see what happens. Wartime Industry, the second inauguration of Wallace F. Bennett. Well, good job. Good job on being inaugurated there. Uh, so we're pretty much done with our land doctrine, actually, now. So, uh, we just finished this one, Wartime Industry, so we get a big old boost to building uh, military factories, even though we don't really need them. Down here, not really much is happening. Uh, we could do that for only 3% more speed, though. That's not really worth it. We'll grab that one, though. More artillery. More, 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 more. 73.29. Mark that Thatcher, please don't hurt the economy too much. I don't want to have bad economy. I don't think anyone wants a bad economy, but still. What is this? Uh, we're slowly demobilizing 0.3, huh? Oh, we got Army Reserve Training, which looks like it'll help out maybe a little bit. We have military austerity, of course. Scottish terrorism, no racial integration. It is what it is. What else do we have here? Oh, yeah. Build the second round of dockyards. Nice. Good stuff. Loyalty is 90.3%. Not bad. And efficiency? Oh, this is just looking pretty darn good. Not that bad. It's going up, so the road will be hard. Cool. Oh, so now we're at 73.3. We barely went up. So, every Englishman will work. Oh, that looks pretty good. More construction speed and output. Flat taxes. Ooh. So, sloth is the greatest ambition or greatest sin a society can be stuck with, for only without it can it truly value itself. This maxim must be taken seriously in the New England we're creating. Um, employment is largely the product of lacking in personal ambition. We must take care of whatever measures necessary to install individual drive in all of our citizens. We need companies to aggressively find the unemployed and bring them into the fold. We need the government to stop intervening in private enterprise and start intervening in the affairs of the lethargic legions of the unemployed. Find every man a job. Do not cease until this society has eradicated slothfulness. Only then, when every man knows he must work and work well, shall we begin working towards the booming entrepreneur's state. Good. A new dawn for England. Margaret Thatcher began, as usual, with the small words on the people she wished to highlight and those that she had met that benefited already from her economic reforms. But there was something more hopeful and perhaps less practical than she wanted to get across the, to, the, to those viewing her keystone speech at home. Wow, we're really not looking good at my empire right now. Uh, liquid reserves, go ahead and pay off a little bit more of the debt, thank you. And furthermore, the English people throughout our great country will once again feel in charge of their own destinies. They shall rise as far as the God-given talents can take them, and in doing so will make the country a better place to live. We in the Royal Party have worked tirelessly to perform our government to free the people from undue burden and distress, and I believe we have done so. What remains now is for England to flourish, and everyday Englishmen and women to flourish with it. I believe that the new monetary policies that we put in place will allow them to start new businesses, build new homes, and make prudent investments in their lives and futures. England is now not only free, but on the path to economic well-being. There will be hardships ahead but for, both for this government and the people it represents, but we must will not let doubt or fear overtake us. Instead, with a stiff upper lip and good English courage, let us face the future head on and embrace revitalization in every way. To the English people, I say to you, let us move forward. Three cheers for a new England. Changing the air. Things are becoming better in Scotland. Great! We've got more stability, which is actually something we can use. The effects of unification. They're stuck with us now. Welsh riots turned into Welsh protests. We have riots in there? Oh, we do. But that's a little bit better. I hope. Please be a little better. Oh, where to go? Wait. Uh, is it right there? Yeah, there. State and English military. Scottish resistance. Well, they'll resist for a period of time. We're getting. That's looking amazing. I love that. Oh, what do we have here? Anything here? Uh, yes. Less elite support, more popular support. That is fine with me, if as long as we get more jobs. So. Good point. Oh, see, we're almost at two billion. Almost at minus two billion. Come on, come on, come on. Raise up that GDP. And lower that debt, too. Oh, God. What the heck? Every Englishman will work. Every English woman will work. We lose monthly population. Gender equality. Less monthly population. More recruitable population factor. Less stability. More output, though. Not bad. Let's get some flat taxes first. How can we ever hope to build a freer, more prosperous England if government bureaucrats are always pickpocketing our workers? Furthermore, how can we ever hope to equally reward all labor if we believe that a hard-working working man should be taxed more than a lazy bum? The solution to these issues of taxation is to level it all off. We must tax each each Englishman on more or less the same level, demonstrating that the hard work of success should be rewarded rather than punished. So, are we going to... This sounds like we're going to decrease the income levels, which I don't like for the government since we need to pay stuff off. We don't really technically have to, but still. So, and barbaric epilogue. Timothy Johnson was an eight-year-old boy. His dad was a teacher and his mommy stayed at home every day. After school, he would go out to the yard and play with his friends. George and Michael out in the little cul-de-sac where he lived. Down at the end of the cul-de-sac was a little bungalow with a garden overgrown and the outside unpainted. Timmy didn't know much about who lived in the household. He knew it was a lady, and George saw her once, old and wizened. 
Michael thought she took children into her house and ate them. He didn't really believe any of that, though, but Timmy was scared anyway, and Timmy was here. George dared him, and he wasn't a whim, so he took him up to s in stride. He glanced to the left and saw him ducking unsubtly uh, behind some bushes. Timmy took a deep breath and knocked it on the door. The door creaked open to reveal a woman with a deep brown hair tied up into a bun. Oh, hello there, she said, smiling gracefully. Timmy looked down to the ground. Please don't eat us, miss. The woman appeared confused for a moment before laughing. Ooh, military austerity. Oh, no, 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 I won't eat you. There's no need to be afraid. Would you like a glass of milk? Timmy looked around before nodding. Oh, boy, don't go into stranger's household, okay? Don't go in there. Thank you, Miss Timmy. Thank you, Miss. Timmy said shyly as he, he was handed the milk. The woman had a big smile on her face and she spoke again, her distinct accent ringing out. So, are you Timothy Johnson? Timmy uh, recoiled back in shock. The woman did a little laugh. Nothing to be worried about, dear. As I speak to you, your mom all the time. She has plenty of stories about you. Timmy and the woman talked for a while, not very long, though. Timmy found it very interesting. She told him about England, where she came from, which apparently was and was still a very sad place. As she took the empty glass, he noticed that she had a distinct limp. Hey, Miss, what do you walk all funny? She turned around and looked at the boy. The light in her eyes seemed to drop a bit. Uh, that's the story for another time. Why don't you go back to your friends? They must be thinking that I'm taking you away. J Timmy got up and rushed away. And don't forget, you can come back whenever you want. Innocence is a beautiful thing. Ah, uh, and ignorance is, can be fun too. Oh boy. So we currently get now 0.82 political power a day. Not great. Uh, we're still putting up some more military factories, which is going to cost us a little bit more, but that's kind of okay with me for now, since I really want to make sure we build lots of civilian factories now. Um, that's just good for the GDP. We, only, we don't have that many military factories, which is okay. It's not ideal. But we're still trying to make some tanks here, which is good. Honestly, we're looking pretty good. I just need more tanks at this point. Factory-wise, what are we doing? Plenty on artillery, plenty on anti-air, plenty on, well, enough on guns, anti-tank, support equipment. This is motorized, which is okay. Fighters are looking okay. Battle tanks, we need some basic help. We need some more APCs that we're going to need. Flat taxes, indirect taxation. The cutting of taxes will cost us 0.5 of our GDP yearly. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's do this one, and then we'll maybe do some other stuff. So every English one will work as well. An economy is a project everyone must take part in if we as a nation want to see it reach great heights. When, Mar when Maggie was helping out her father's grocery, she saw first hand the key played the key role played by her mother in that business is success. Now we unfortunately preside over a society where a woman participating in the economy is frowned upon due to an, an amorphous social concern. Due to that, we ask how can we ever be wealthy if half the population is not allowed to enter the realm of prosperity? But she is in prosperity. She's working. If a woman has a chance to work, the government must support our business uh, in allowing her that chance. We are not suggesting anything so chaotic as employment for all women, for of course, many key roles they have in the home. But that you knows firsthand that an entrepreneuring mind of women and how much their drive to success must, should be nurtured in the building of a national ec economic strength. Let's mobilize the resources to find work for all women who choose it, rather than regulating the few who have struggled to make it. Well, we'll see what happens. If the birth rate goes down, then, you know, oh well. It's just our country, right? Uh, competent officers, efficiency... Well, we're actually at a perfect level right now. A base efficiency is 6.25%. It's slowly going up, so let's not touch it yet. I think it's best to wait. And our GDP continues to grow, so... Even though we eventually will have to cut a lot of things here, I think we'll still be doing okay. Um, that's not... Uh, it's over 2 billion now. Awesome! Balance the budget. Balance it, balance, 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 balance. Go ahead and train you guys. You'll be fine. Civilian austerity. Uh, hmm... Now, I could use these factories immediately, but we're not going to. Prototype reactive armor. I really want these. I really, really, really want good tanks. Like, that's why I'm researching this so hard. Like, we're just going to go straight for them. And that's why I'm, I do not let up on the military building spending or you know, construction right now. Because we could really use it. We could really, really use it. Nothing there. 106% uh, influence. Every English wound will work. Uh, punish the traitors. We could do that. We don't need to. It's for it wouldn't have been possible without you. The enemy within. We lower our GDP, which I really don't like. This side is all about lowering GDP. Targeting corruption and local authorities, the Local Powers Act. Uh, increase stuff. Restrain, restrict local authority. Where were the CEOs during the war? Um, uh, yeah, force them to bend the knee. A close call for Miss Thatcher. Uh oh. We are liberating you. All powers come back to us. The economy chained. Oh. Well, hold on. Uh, whoa. Major businesses, all opposed to the government, are now from under the thumb. Or, local powers acting efficiently because of success. And information campaigns being to shift the views of the citizenry and their power wielded by the local authorities have been drastically reduced. These powers will serve their own aims. Use to serve the people. Hmm. Hmm. I want to do more of this stuff, but do we really need it that much? Advanced training when you're draft with volunteer only and elite army. Modern trench fighting. 
Oh, I like this, but I think it's probably better to go with an elite army. So, we shall take the steps to turn the royal army into the most well-trained and organized of its kind on Earth. Shaping the royal army into an elite world-class force will incur some heavy costs, but the strength they will entail will soon be worth sacrifice. The country needs an army flexible enough to contain any invader, protect its borders, and safeguard the people. So, with political interference with the professional army. I wish we get more political power. That's nice. More attack, more defense. Now, we go from one-year draft to volunteer only, so we're going to lose manpower, probably. Well, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Advanced training methods. Division training time goes up. More attack. Oh, and efficiency will moderately increase. That's good. That's good. Good stuff. Oh, nice. Better artillery. I love artillery. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So we're done with artillery for now. It's almost 70 maintenance companies. That could be good. Uh, anything here? We're getting marines already. I really wish we had more things we could do with uh, plane stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe we should get some better planes, finally. Oh, we're mobilizing a little bit more just because we have less Scottish resistance, which is good. And we're barely getting any of that. Look at reserves. Um, pay off more debt. And then next time we're going to pay off or raise our GDP some more. And I do have a cup of coffee because we now can't, can afford it. We are slightly wealthy, so we can afford a little spot of coffee here and there. Or maybe tea if we really feel like it. Good, 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 good. Infantry divisions. Uh, 20 combat. I don't want it. Like I said before, I want to make these guys 40 combat width, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, you guys. We already have maintenance companies on. You guys. Royal Military Police. They already have that on there. Scotland, Highlanders. Oh, we need to get Mountaineers as well. Infantry. Yeah, no. Mountaineers, that's fine. Modernize the artillery. Bonus. Modernize the infantry. Um, I'm really focusing on artillery. Even though we've already done that a lot, we could probably get more done with our infantry, though. Uh, let's do that. So, improving our ineffective infantry should always be our utmost concern. The army will last in prote protected combat only as long as it's men. Hence, we will prioritize offering weapons and skills necessary to defend England alongside the king's shilling. Every man must learn to fight at the best of his ability in case total war comes a knock-in in our lifetime twice. Urban centers. Me with industrial giants. Uh, let's take a look at this. How far are we... Oh, look at that. Army professionalism is going up as well. Nice. Two a month. Stagnating. Oh, industrial expertise. Experience industrial base. Nascent. Oh, that is not good. How do we raise that up? It's going down slowly. This is going up quite quickly. Industrial equipment. Uh, that's going up. That's not going up or down. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to meet with industrial giants again. Just because we need to. And then we will visit urban centers. Nice. And Russia's on fire again. That's okay with us. No war support. Oh, oh yeah. The Holy crap. They're really just killing each other over there. Any factions? No. Oh, look at that. Vietnam broke free. Oh, it's a People's Republic of... Oh, Chi men. Oh, man. Do they have a focus? Look at all these things they have. They don't look very good. These national spirits look very bad. Oh, my God. Japanese military restrictions. Ooh. Sock. Ah, they're part of the Socialist International. State of Burma. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, they're in an alliance with... Oh, they're kind of in a force alliance. Huh. Two-Faced Burma. Doesn't look like they're really done yet in terms of development, but that's okay. Can I, I? We cannot manually justify in TNO, which really sucks. But that's okay. I kind of understand why. Modernize the infantry. Uh, coastal defenses. Efficiency will moderately decrease. Adds a billion to the national debt or new anti air guns. Adds 75 million to the national debt. Let's do this one. So, one of the most terrifying aspects of Sea Lion was the extensive ruinous damage done by the Luftwaffe's bombers. Now that their air raids have been made even more destructive thanks to new technology, and their fighters still outclass our own. We have no choice but to build additional anti-air emplacements across the country. Only then shall our cities and airfields be sheltered by the Luftwaffe's uh, talons. This may seem to be overly pessimistic to some, but then again, they're better off safe from aerial bombardments and submerged in sorry and rubble. Pretty much. Alright, let's invest in our GDPs a little more. There we go, 73.64. It's not growing that much at all, and our deficit is getting smaller. So... It is what it is, you know. Uh, that being said, resource-wise, what do we need? We're importing some more fuel, which I don't want to lower. But I could get another thing of chromium, maybe. It's already in Bulgaria, huh? Uh, let's get the Boer Republic. Why not? Boer Republic. Huh. All right, just one. Since we're making enough factories anyways for now. 20, 20, 20. That's nice. Wow. U.S. Japanese talks begin. Can the Pacific live up to his name? This is disgusting. What happened to the Super Shield? Super Rex Commissary? What the heck is this? Alta Foschna. Ad administrative is unknown. Atmosphere of unrest. Legacy of the traitors. Black market severe trading. Drums of war. That's kind of cool. New anti air guns. The Boer Republic is allied with. Oh! These guys. New anti air guns. Okay. Um, doctrinal advances. 
we're not going to do this one. We get more defense, but less defense. Uh, we could do that one eventually, but let's let's wait. Uh, th more influence, a stability, fair employment, medium increase. Let's get more jobs. Indirect taxation. Now. The very cornerstone of a free market, that of un unimpeded rights to buy and sell goods, has been distorted for decades. Sales tax, a value-added tax, or VAT, excise tax, these are all simply word by words for the theft of an entrepreneur's rightful wealth. We say no to this tyrannical practice, and we're prepared to pass the Indirect Taxation Act. The ITA removes the many taxes placed on consumer ta goods, taxes that artificially inflate prices, and stifle economic growth. Such a regressive measure hurts both worker and employer, and few could generally improve of such measures. Our economists already predict the booming of all economic measures once the ITA is passed, with the job creators set to benefit the most. The only way one could oppose such a plan is the communistic desire to steal every last penny from our innovators to, in order to create a political web of social programs. To this we can say that if a social program is built upon the theft from hard workers, it is more unjust than that which it seeks to remedy. I think I get what they're saying, but... The wording is a little clunky. That's okay. My words are also clunky sometimes, too. Still 104% influence. Raising our popular support. Great, great. 73.65 billion in terms of uh, GDP. And we're going to pay off a little more debt. And we're almost below 54 billion. I really... I, I, I know, like, it factors this in for the game. Like, this debt, you, I think it's just basically you paid off autom automatically and you're not really, sh you don't really see things about it. So that's why it doesn't go up. It just automatically does it. Civil War and EMS are nice. Um, so, I just, I don't know. I'm glad it's not going up any higher and we already, you know, take off the interest on the debt with our uh, income, but sometimes I really wonder if uh, it's really going up, but I know it is. Cool. Uh, second Highlander is good. Oh, actually, we need, did we not get a Template. Uh, maybe we can get some marines, maybe. There are the marines. We got enough army XP to probably switch these guys out. It's fine. Where well, we have enough for now. Not bad. Marines and 50 second Highlanders. Anything here? We could get anti air. But we don't have any anti air, do we? No, we. Ooh. We have zero in storage. Cool. Uh, we can put, put, put some anti-tank on there. We still have enough. Piercing would go up by quite a bit. Military has 30. Let's, let's save it for later. Cool. Military spending in my nation? I don't think so. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, so let's get all the people that we have set to do naval invasions, and let's set them up to become marines. Alright. Yeah, can we switch all of you guys to marines? No, we cannot. Let's set half you guys to become marines. You guys can. Let's go. Go ahead and train if you need it. You guys have no orders, and that's fine. As long as you're not taking too many supply heads, that's okay with me. Fair Employment Act. An economy where the entrepreneur works provides jobs, we must ensure that everyone can equally get those jobs. Enter the Fair Employment Act, which aims to prevent employer discrimination uh, so that we can all prosper. Well, this employers already discriminate regardless if it's there or not. The FEA will ensure that every productive... Uh, upsetting member of society can share its wealth. Employers may not discriminate based on sex, religion, nationality, or race, unless they have a just objection. This applies to the housing and schooling, both critical places of economic... Oh, everything's falling apart. Economic life. It goes without saying, that, however, that this is not some liberal legislation that allows for degeneracy in society. It would be absolutely criminal to require traitors, sexual deviants, and subversive races to be treated as normal Britons. Any slander about us will allow such people to have a place in society must be shut down immediately, not to equivocate the making of a more equal economy with the infection of society. I don't know, man. I don't know. 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 Not bad, though. Oh, the, build the final round of dockyard. That's kind of cool. How, how are the dockyards doing? Got planes. We need basic jet casts. Wait, CV. Oh, uh, we don't want that. Are we using... Are we... Oh, hold on. Where are you guys? Oh, CV. Carriers. Um, they have carrier. I just realized they have carrier. I've never used close air support on my carriers. I almost always use naval bombers. I know. Let's let's keep it on. Let's keep it on. I never use them. We'll try it out. Why not? And this is hard to tell, like if these things are actually being used or not, because the hollowness is hard to see sometimes. What's up here? Nothing. I thought I saw some red. And you know, let's get under fifty-four billion. There you go. And now we're gonna invest more into here too. Oh, other expenditures. What is that? Double shift? Oh boy. A final su push to success. Sure. Already the average worker free from tyrannical tax men and union bosses has seen more money in his new pocket. Already entrepreneurs are opening new and booming businesses at a dizzying rate. We are on the cusp of a prospering free market state, but there still remains opponents in every corner and have a sip of coffee now. 
Ah, we can finally enjoy coffee. The ranks of the Royal Party still crawl with opportunists awaiting a downturn, even the slightest reversal of policy so that they can stop our plans for the future. Meanwhile, Bolshevists and other dangerous types prowl the streets looking for anyone to turn against free, free enterprise. Knowing these obstacles while also being aware of our nearness, or nearness to success, how should we strike our final blow at the foes of prosperity? Must we slacken the pace to rally our party and potentially isolate radical critics? Or would it be easier to go full speed ahead, keeping iron discipline in the party in the streets within our police force? Good. The double shift. And this act, which served only to further emphasize the Prime Minister's hysteric insanity, would indeed further harm the common man who she claims this bill will help. If this fair employment act were to put in place, honest English workers would lose their jobs to halfwits, and every man in the nation would come to a home to an empty dinner table while their wives are off working in coal mine. Worse, each would be forced to work and to work short hours to care for children while their wives pick, slam a pickaxe into the ground, declared a UE party MP over the hoot and laughs of his party's a voice agreement. Maggie eagerly stepped up to the microphone in the center of the room, smiling as she already knew her response. Well, the right honorable gentleman's wife is suited to a coal mine, I highly doubt the gentleman would be interested in what she has to cook, or how she'd raise her children anyway. She paused and tried to suppress her smile while her own party laughed along with her. I think I speak for everyone here when I say that serving in the government is hard work and no job harder or with longer hours than being prime minister. And does the honorable member know what I do when I get home? I cook dinner for my husband, Dennis, every day and without exception. Having wifely duties is no excuse to deny a woman a chance at a career, nor is it for that matter an excuse to deny England the economic benefits of doubling its labor pool. How very progress... Wait, what was the last part? Oh, civilian austerity? I don't think so. I don't think we need normal civilian spending. I think we need more austerity. And improved jet fighters. Uh, how very progressive... Deny England... Uh, let's see... Doubling its labor pool. Well, if you double the labor pool immediately, what do you think is going to happen to wages? Uh, improved jet fighters, cool. Huh? Yeah, we're almost there. Cast? Are we using cast? Yeah, we are using cast. Hold on, was it compromised with the old guard I thought I saw? Hmm. Maybe I missed it. We have so much influence still. Meet with more with the industrial giants. Oh, we want more grub. Grob? Job growth now. We already have 8%. That's so good. Oh, wait. Oh, her image changed. Well, I'm not going to change the thumbnail then. So be it. Just because I I have other thumbnails to attend to. Look at that GDP. 78 billion. Let women work. Nothing bad could ever come from that because they can make more money for themselves. Let's see. Oh, invest in it. Why not? Might as well. And maybe pay some more off. Now, we are making more military factories, which probably is not... Great, it changes in the air. Hey, look at that. May there be peace in the north. Great, we're getting core on all these places. Finally, my friends. Oh, slow and steady. In the lady's eyes. Oh, we gotta figure that one out. So, it would have been possible without you. Actually, poppy support is what? 100%. We can lower that support right now. It would have been possible without you. The Royal Party campaign tirelessly to win a majority, and thus funding from our donors was essential in achieving this. Nonetheless, the main cause of our success was undeniably the electorate. The votes and voices of the royalist supporters who spread our message fearlessly throughout the election put their trust in the party and Thatcher's leadership. They were instrumental in the Trump, and we must repay them. An argument in Parliament. So, I believe the honorable members are wish wishfully misunderstanding the scene they're looking at, uh, stated Thatcher, raising her voice above the squabbling members of the Parliament. The question of whether or not there will be economic reform is already decided. There will be. The honorable gentleman, however, has been graciously consulted as to whether it will be done quickly or decisively or slow and carefully. Scowls filled the chamber and she answered them with a smile. They wouldn't vote against her, whatever they're grumbling. There's little doubt that the Prime Minister has made up her mind already, uh, said a well-spoken MP in a red tie, over discernible jeers from his fellows. But if you truly wish to do the honor of consulting us, then I say we do this disaster thing quickly that the calamity of it will all be over th with haste. No, roared at UEPM, accompanied by a dull cheers of approval by his party. If the Prime Minister has any sense of responsibility to our nation, she'll go slowly. That England itself won't be abruptly torn in half during this ill-advised reform. The clamor soon dead down as, as they soon realized that the Prime Minister had already made a choice. Rapid and painful reform, but reap the benefits of having it done sooner? You can't put a price on national stability. Slow and steady it is. Um, oh crap. Now let's get this. Slow and steady. Temporary effects of monetism with slow and Can I... It's lagging. Oh god. Okay, slow and steady. It reflects more political power, stability, war support, lose political power. At least support goes down, give more influence. Benefits of monetarism are quicker, but we'll have more debuffs in that period. Every own state lose jobs, 0.005%. Declaration, declaration of war. In the lady's eyes. Oh wait, what's the difference? Oh, this one, slow and steady, gives you 20% more stability. So, replace... Slow and steady. More political power, less consumer goods, more stability. It gets slower, but we'll have less debuffs. Job growth will be decreased. Hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm not really sure. Do we should go slow and steady, or should we go in the lady's eyes?
Regardless, we still get a declaration of war, but still. Hmm. Oh, I like that extra stability, which we could really use unless consumer goods factories, but... You know what? How about we go faster? Let's be, let's play like as if we're in Red World and we're going to go faster, faster, faster. Rapid and painful reform, but, but reap the benefits more quickly. Oh, boy. That's, how many people have we pissed off already? I am glad I raised my GDP levels higher just because this is not looking good. More, more, more GDP? G G GDP, please? I, I'd like a little more GDP, please. Um, go ahead and do that some more. That's fine. Now we got to do more stuff for the populace. I'm kind of ignoring the populace for elites, but whatever. Mm, early battleship cruiser. Nice. Very good. And what do we have here? Events, decisions, timeouts. Decisions available. I mean, yeah, we can already know what's going on. 77.5% of base efficiency. It's still going up, which is fine, so I'm not going to touch it. Hold a speech in Parliament. Don't need to do that, because we have 100%... Oh, oh, crap. Oh, the fair... Oh, crap. I forgot about this. Oh, boy. So, a vote on fair employment. 278 out of almost 1,000 MPs needed. Well, come up compromise with UE. Yeah, we're going to go with the UE. If we can. 20 days. Ooh, in 20 days. We can get... Oh, Yeah, we should be able to do this. We're going to compromise with the UE. It wouldn't have been possible without you. Uh, we have legislation going through, so we're going to wait. Punch the traitors. We don't need more influence right now. The enemy within... At least support will go down. Let's go to that one. So, not all of the insidious forces who oppose this lurk in the quarters of the Westminster run scheme in the basements of ideological fanatics. According to our reports, there is a litany of anti-government individuals in the business world, and any men of such power are a threat to the Royalist Party. The government will come through the business world of England to find such individuals and root them out. Whether these business leaders openly support fascism or secretly harbor communist sympathies, they must be dealt with swiftly. Good. Death of Ho Chi Minh. I just saw, knew you existed. A tragic day. He is very... He's a very interesting character if you ever read up about him. Very interesting. Hmm. Gotta love that copy. Ah, early autoloaders. Even though we already have advanced autoloaders, but, you know, whatever. That's just me. Actually, it's almost 70. Keep going better. Keep doing that. That's good. Actually, how's the military factories coming along? We don't have anything down here. Uh, we're getting APCs, finally. That's good. That's very good, actually. Right here. Uh, let's invest in GDP, more GDP so we can get some more money later on. All right, I'm glad I looked at this before I realized what was going on here. Woo! So Oman has defeated Oman. Nice. That should be enough. 324. That's not bad. Out of 977, that looks really bad, but it should be okay. All right? Three days. Anything else down here? Promise change in the countryside. 97, 87. Pretty good. Still 102% influence. That's awesome. The act passes. Uh, this is the exact same thing every single time. Replace gender equality with promoted gender equality. Uh, not bad. Even more job growth. Great. Enemy thin. Which hurts our job growth. The Company Investigation Act. Uh, sure, why not? Oh, we add a civilian and naval dockyard. Cool. With the passing of the Company Investigation Act, the government will have the power to launch an invest official investigation into all English companies and CEOs who we determined to be a potential threat to the nation. While the business will doubtless be furious at such an act, there will be a little resistance elsewhere in English society towards our attempt to root out fascist and communist figures in such influential positions. I'm going to hurt the GDP so I can make a better G have a better GDP. Still not great. What is this expenditures for? I can understand civilian spending and military spending to a degree, just because we're slowly making a few more divisions, we're making them better, but we're also uh, making more military factories. Construction spending, I kind of understand as well, but this other expenditures, which doesn't cost us that much, honestly, but still. Hmm. How much political power do we get? One. Oh, actually, that's not, not, not too bad. That's a little better than I thought, actually. The People's Prime Minister, good. The state of the English military is getting better and better every single time. Oh, Egypt's having a problem now. Oh, order collapses in Egypt? Is this the beginning of something larger? Isn't there like a dam? Like, there's the Aswan Dam thing, right? Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh. Um, okay. Let's build the final round of dockyards then. Go ahead and keep investing more money. Just invest more money so we get some more money later on. That's what I want. Probably the most. Ah, oh, Sudan's falling apart. Pretty normal though. Uh, look out for local authorities. Elite support goes up. We're at ninety-five percent. We can probably do that one first. Slow looking over local authorities. Like a raven serving the English countryside with his beady black eyes, which shall score the nation for any signs of mis pheasants. Uh, the incompetence of previous prime ministers has been seen the wrath of corruption spread throughout the leadership of the local cities, which is an obvious threat to the state. We must not. We must locate the corruption and strike when the iron is hot. Good idea. Good. Good idea. England's seriously becoming kind of powerful now. 
Oh, it's not England, though. It is the United Kingdom, so. God, I want to go to War with Ireland. Hopefully we get an event, too. I would love to go to War with Ireland. Please, at least let me get Ulster back. For the love of God, that is making sense why we don't have it. Why we can't have it. It makes no sense. I must have it. That's your mama wants it. And she's going to get it. Keep cutting your budget, though. Our deficit to income ratio is minus 8.4%. God, I wish I was like in real life. Oh. Uh, visit factories. We're good. And the Mother Brotherhood is gone. Egyptian Revolutionary Camp. Oh. Hey, he's so happy. Look how happy he is. Gamal Abdel Nasser. Uh, breaking and merging. Getting more domestic jobs. Domestic job growth would decrease a little bit. Uh, go ahead and do that. So, we are continuing to formulate our plans in the cities of powerful local authorities throughout the country will be broken up by the greatest hammer of the state and forcibly merged with new institutions forged by the government. The new authorities to emerge in the local cities will be considered considerably weaker, of course, which will increase Thatcher's power. Hmm. Hmm. We are an authoritarian democracy, so. Gotta love it. 78.87, not bad. Uh, more GDP growth, please. Slowly, slowly, slowly having a better deficit every single year. You know what? With all this stuff, doing that, go and train too. Now we're going to get hurt here. Which is fine. Our ships could probably use a little bit more training as well anyway, so. I'm not really too worried about that. We could increase. Uh, we're getting daily army XP. No, we're not. We're actually losing army XP. That's not good. Uh, actually, you guys, yeah. Some of you guys are really experienced. Go ahead and train for now then. We should have enough equipment that you shouldn't really hurt our stockpiles. And we'll probably get point. Oh, actually, that's not bad. 0.1 a day. That's actually... It's not bad, actually. Of course, that's before volunteer only, but that's okay. Um, elite support. I gotta break that down a little bit more first. And they'll visit urban centers. Anything up here? Good. Cool. So let me know. I'm not, I'm not gonna do this yet. Should we target corruption in local authorities? Or target the corruption or corrupt companies? In which we go, where are the CEOs during the war? Which looks okay, doesn't look bad. Force them to bend the knee. And the economy chained. Or, should we go down with this path again, the Local Powers Act? We are liberating you. And ending up with all powers come back under us. Which one do you think we should do? Let me know in the comments below, because I'll take... Uh, I'll listen and read your comments and figure out which one we will do. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Oh, we can't do slow and steady. In the lady's eyes, we move towards the most prosperous era in English history, and we can accept no obstacles to the task. Any Bolshevik agitator or successionist traitor attempting to sabotage this growth, attempting to oppose the universal prosperity through some misguided Marxist ideology, must be crushed. And in every city, our police force knows the names and faces of everyone surrounding them, and will act against subversion on a moment's notice. Soon, the days of division and squalor will be nothing but vague memory, as its proponents are completely shunted away. Civilian spending? I don't think so. Research? I think so. Uh, it's almost 60, it's almost 70. It is 69. Almost 70. Nice. Nice. Get more factories. So we're done building military factories for now. I still want to keep building up more infrastructure. There's a lot of infrastructure we can build up. I've never built up that much infrastructure in this mod yet. Um, we're not making any of those yet. I still want more APCs. APCs take quite a while to build. Oh, another division. Which hurts our budget, but whatever. 77. Oh, only 77 billion. Oh. No, why do you hurt me like that? Armor. At this point, just go down here and grab more max factories in a state. It's not that. It's not that ahead of time. So, uh, oh, that's not bad. More growth. More growth. More growth. Infinite growth. Fifty-three point nine three. Is it? Did that go up a little higher? Huh. I'm kind of surprised that jo Gross German Gross Germanisches Reich. I can't speak right now. Has decided to not annex Netherlands yet, or even protect these guys? Oh, wait, hold on. A terrorist attack in Italy, a young democracy threatened by radicalism. At the dawn, it's not just night that dies, it's man and his becoming, and we warm, and the warm blood stain the pavement is the word that is just starting. In the ladies' eyes, a declaration of war. Oh, crap. Hot autumn ends. So I realize that this is Reich's protector at Ruslan, as well as Reich's commissary at Muscovy. Oh, led by no authority. Oh, crap. That's not good. Oh, that's not good that we have things like that. We'll get to go through quickly. More influence? Do we? Oh my god, that political power. We already have enough influence. So, how... Oh. Rushing through it? Oh my god, this hurts. This hurts so bad. Oh. Mm, oh, doctrinal advances. We could do that. Focus on battleships. Popular support. Focus on carriers. 
we already have enough elite support, don't we, though? So, oh, no, we, we need more elite support, so let's, let's do that one. Focus on carriers. So, the introduction of the aircraft carrier signaled a paradigm shift in the modern sea power, where before the control of vital sea lanes were decided by burnished rows of buchanan special treatment steel, the Second World War proved that even the mightiest battleships were fatally humbled by torpedo levels from planes in a bare fraction of its size. Thus, every superpower worth the title now possesses aircraft carriers ever, ever vital for projecting the strength thousands of miles from their shores. Aircraft carriers are key to bring the Royal Navy into the post-war era, no matter what some maimed sea dogs clamor for. A declaration of war. And so I think it's self-evident that it's impossible to fight a peasant, a pleasant or civilized war. We tried it twice, and I don't know how many cared for the experience. All that is hoped is that a war might be short enough to minimize the suffering, said the Prime Minister, and to a crisis in Nanjing, pray they survive, into the countless microphones of the news conference. With this in mind, we find ourselves... Oh, crap, I let it go by too fast. I don't know. The war's been declared. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. My economy, my GDP, my stocks. How is the stock market doing? Happy 1970, though. We enter this decade rushing through economic reforms. This might have been a bad idea, but I have no idea. We'll see what happens. We are pretty good on uh, war support, though. Or at least stability. Maybe not war support. Over here looking pretty decent. Not bad. In the meantime, we still, don't, we still have quite a few uh, factories to use. Not near us. Thank goodness. Can I save that? Yes, I can. Can I save that? Yes, I can. Good. You can save it just one more time, please. Just, yes, thank you. Jet casts. Improved jet casts. Uh, yes. That is, as some would say, bueno. Engineering. Yes, please. Why don't we get another research slot? Focus on carriers. Great. Go the carrier stuff. We can now be the screens for the carriers. RF bases. Oh, we will waste money on that. That's fine. Whatever. Um, punish the traders. How much influence do we have? We have too much already, so. Meet again. Lays opposition. Nothing down there. To the left. I haven't done this for a while. Uh, a black or blue telephone. Direct communication is part of the key of securing long-term close relations with this, between states in our increasingly modern age. However, the question remains over which country we should establish a meaningful contact connection with. Setting up a telephone line with the U.S. administration would allow our country to op cooperate much more closely with OFN, helping to cement our trust with those who are part of the free world. On the other hand, reestablishing direct means of talking with the German leadership will help us re reconcile with them. Whichever side we choose will have much more influence over us. Cool. And I already know which way we're going. We're probably going to go with the OFN, just because that's probably the best way to go for us, since we are, we're somewhat free market, you know? Kind of. The free access clause. A ray of hope. Huh. Okay, the Silver Purchase Act. United somewhat. Token civil rights. I love token civil rights. The last bastion of unity. They also have Italy in there, so. The OFN isn't really extremely strong. I mean, the US is probably going to be the strongest nation in the world eventually. Japan is probably going to be falling apart. They do have Australia, New Zealand, which is okay. New Zealand's okay. Australia's okay, too. That's pretty good. Africa Shield looks pretty disappointing. And they do have Italy. They have Italy, Bosnia, Croatia, Italy, uh, Italian, Albania, and Hungary as well. But they don't have Romania and Bulgaria, which looks pretty terrifying. But if we joined with the Unity Pact, that, that would make us pretty strong. But I don't know. With America on our side and Italy, which probably can't do too much for us. It should be okay. Oil crisis erupts. I have yet to experience this oil crisis. I've read about this on the Reddit and stuff like this, but this seems like an extremely important thing to be aware of. Nothing can come out, can come out of this from the Middle East. People do not want words. They want the sound of battle, the sound of destiny. Gabel Abdel Nasser. That's an... Uh, oh, the Jeff said no! No! <laughs> no! No! A proportional cost of GDP. Yeah. Um, increase that. Oh my god, that... Oh, no. American technical support. Influence will increase synthetic resources. Uh, let's do that one. So, American technical support... Well, hold on. You know what? We might get that unlocked if we do this stuff. Well, maybe not. Well, let's just do another one first anyways. Uh... That's fine to do this one. So, after months uh, spent rectifying the flaws in our antiquated equipment and tactics, we can finally begin the laborious, laborious a process of integrating them into the armed forces of modernized doctrines. The English army will have clear plans in place for any future war, ones which guarantee swift victory against the hubris of would-be conquerors. Our people can now rest well with the knowledge that their homeland is well protected against almighty bulwark, oaken, or steely, and should, should it find use in the future without the weakness that had doomed its predecessors. We should telephone, though, now. The Prime Minister of the most powerful nation in the British Isles was, was alone in the world. Sitting at her desk as she signed some forms relating to one policy or another, she was actually considering something far greater importance. Namely, to whom should the Prime Minister as an office have a direct line to be called if needed? In the privacy of her mind, she had taken to call the blue and black options. The blue telephone to the Americans would have several distinct advantages, for it would be an immediate and a needed contact point between London and Washington, which simply didn't exist. And if the right ever became hostile, it would most certainly need to exist, though. But the Americans were fickle. One wrong administration and the entire effort of bringing them over to her point of view could be rendered not. The black telephone did not possess this uh, restriction. The fear was a fear, and no one would be 
and replacing him anytime soon. More to the point, to not coddle the Germans at least somewhat could be far more dangerous than doing the same to the Americans. Germania was closer, and the channel was far less of an obstacle than the entire Atlantic Ocean. Margaret Thatcher had just finished signing the last form of which her decision was made. A blue telephone, a black telephone. I'll go the blue telephone. We'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Please get through this economic reform stuff. Oh, we must have just finished re reconstructing the Royal Navy with the dockyards. Nice. Election season still there for some reason. I'm not sure why. This is looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Honestly, with our defense, we're looking pretty awesome. We need some more elite support right now. And we get currently 0.66 political power day. Uh oh, the oil. Oh, no. Oh, that's an oil crisis. We are only hope for economic survival is to ride up the storm and pray for a miracle. Oh, shnikes. We actually have tanks. Can you believe it? We actually, as the English, have tanks. Michael Carver? Yes. You are the man for the job. I'd give it to a woman, but you are the dude. I guess. I don't know. Go ahead and train for now if we need it. No wonder there's an oil crisis. Uh, can I get rid of the oil crisis by building a lot of refineries? So we lose consumer goods, stability, construction speed, factory output, synthetic oil. With the recent crash of the ENI oil company, oil prices worldwide are undergoing a period of rapid fluctuation. Oh, this is, isn't this mirroring like the oil crisis that we had in the 70s with stagnation and stuff like that? That's, that's got to be it, right? And OPEC and all that sort of garbage and oh my goodness my dad lived through those times and was like wow this really sucks doctrinal advances advances cool american technical support one of the main advantages of using american support is the fact that it's not german and as we still have issues with the germans it would be better for us to request the support of the u.s instead we will n nevertheless become more reliant on the americans which will set a danger dangerous precedent precedent not president but precedent if we wish to continue to remain entirely independent However, we have to make a choice and would rather have avoid the devil if we already know all too well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay, I've already been doing a lot of austerity measures. Like, how many more austerity measures do you want me to do? I'm already cutting the military. I've already cut civilian spending. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to have to continue. I can't decrease the debt. No, the de debt increased some more. Oh, no. No. Nope, nope, nope. The debt increased even more. Because of all this extra spending. Oh. We were below 54 billion. Now we are above it. Why? Why must you hurt me? Civilian spending. Uh, why must you pain me like this? I hate debt. Debt is but a number that chains us to bondage. Ah. It looks like uh, the communists aren't doing so well, though. And that's a good thing, at least. At least we can say that at least we're not. Genrik Yagoda. Hey! Have you battled Soviet patriotism? Oh, it's a little bit too late for you, son. The Kingdom of Siberia. Oh, that looks amazing. Vorek the Second. You look very. You look like Shrek a little bit. I don't know why. Just into the Atomic Age. Esoteric Kingdom. Look at see the Siberian plan. Oh my goodness. A new Sabor. Oh, America must be really feeling the effects. Everything's. What is this? Everything's bigger and what the flip? Running on fumes. Yes, yes. Bring on Texas. Bring it on. Disaster averted. Please, I need more fuel. Uh, is there, like, a focus tree that pops up here? Oh, maybe? Maybe not? Oh my god, there's so much here. How long is this campaign going to be? I mean, that's fine with me. I, I'm really enjoying this campaign, but Jesus Christ, this is... This is something. I'll, I'll tell you what. Meet the old boss again. Uh, it's her party now. Change of parliamentarianism. No child should go hungry. The Hunger Act, unions. I don't see anything down here about the fuel and oil and stuff like that. Finish off the liberals. Illusion of democracy. Dreams of an empire. Long live Britain. Ooh. Punish the traitors. How much influence do we have? A hundred. Hundred four percent still. Uh. That's fine, let's do this one. Well, we celebrate our victory and praise those who made it happen. Let's not be distracted from the traitors who dare to stand in our way. We shall locate all those who sought our, to hinder our rise to power so that they may be punished accordingly. Oh, look at all... Do we have a little bit more here? Or we finally can see everything here at the same time. We can probably see everything at the same time. Defensive doctrine, that's nice. Rushing through it. Can we please rush through this as fast as possible? For the love of God, please. Tokyo, stand up. Has the Empire of jo Japan gone mad? The Greek conspiracy has gone even crazier. Virtually laid siege to Tokyo. Oh, God. Tokyo Senate has been induced by paranoid gripping Japanese society as a result of the Great Conspiracy. Brother would suspect brother. Oh, God. Um, Japan, are you feeling okay? I mean, if you collapse, that's great, you know. Oh, look at that. We're about to increase our uh, industrial equipment. 
So we are rudimentary right now. We're going to get a factory complex to get more output, more for output for factory and, and uh, dockyard. But we get about 10% more construction speed, which we're going to need for now. Um, I'm going to continue slashing this because we can't afford this. I mean, GDP is getting better, uh, or depth is getting slightly, 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 slightly better. But construction speed is way down. I want to keep building up infrastructure to a degree, maybe. Oh, man. I don't want to just keep staying here and building up civilian factories, but we kind of have to. Um, this video's gone on very long. It's almost an hour long because it, this, this is so narrative driven, which I love, but oh my goodness. It takes so long to get through this. Uh, to German technology, electronics, and American technology. There's no Air Force on this planet that can be compared to the Americans. The United States has the most futuristic fighter jets and helicopters at its disposal. Their modern style of warfare is also very intriguing, even though it's not known if it's totally reliable. If we were to have some of these aircrafts in our own Air Force, the German military would be as fearsome as it currently seems. Or wouldn't be nearly as fearsome. Come on, I, I want to I wanna increase the GDP, please. Oh, the debt's going up. No! No, that's not good. No. No. You go back down. Okay, how do I... Maybe I should not have had a flat income tax then. Yeah. High income weighted elite tax exemptions. We're all suffering through this. But at least we're suffering together. Hopefully, stuff over here gets resolved. Can, uh, oh god, Ba'ad, Thies, Iraq. Okay, we're Sudam. Hassan al Bakir al Qaidi. And oh, as soon as I start looking over here, they they collapse. What the heck? Oh my god, they. Oh my shnikes, they collapse hard. Uh, German military advisors by a massive amount. New military advisors. Oh, and influence will decrease. American military advisors. Let's do that one. In its present state, the English army is far too under undertrained to face the challenges of modern warfare. We need to seek the help of American advisors if this is going to change. They will equip our forces with skills necessary to defend our troops against any German threat. This would bring us much closer to the U.S., but though it would be as it may, we may need to help and be damned if we turn to the Germans. So hopefully they can like send fleets over here. Even though, honestly, if you get into a major conflict between the U.S. and Germany, everything is just going to explode and nukes are going to be fine. So, And they're... Ta oh my god. Up to 38 carriers? They have no battleships, which is not great, but Jesus Christ. <gasps> Recovery from monetary reform. Despite the havoc the Iron Lady's rapid monetary reform inflicted upon the country, things are beginning to look up. Foreign companies are beginning to wrap their heads around the new system. A few shell-shocked investors have begun searching for opportunities while the market struggles, and the bureaucracy is catching up with the changes. If things continue like this, then a full recovery may soon be on the horizon. More political power gain, less consumer goods that we can use. Uh, stability, worse support, factory output, medium decrease in economic output. Oh my god. Oh my god. Full speed ahead, though. Full speed ahead. How's it going to hurt us? 77.35? Okay, then. Well, it doesn't look like that much has happened. Um, I want to meet with these guys again, but we're going to wait. I really want to probably get more lead support, and we're going to finish this episode, which has basically gone an hour long, with better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great, and new reforms in the industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once oss ossified industrial world will help prove to be a boon to the worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed into in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. Their needs were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for the much-needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Great! Even though our GDP has kind of gone down a little bit. Uh, radar, that'd be fine to do, but let's go over here first. Uh, let's do this one. Military factory construction speed. That's okay for now. Uh, actually, let's get through one more focus. One more, Just one more focus before we end the campaign. Or, not the campaign, but the episode. Because this is an hour long. I usually don't do an hour long because they just take so much time up. And they take so long to process these videos. But for now, that's okay. Okay, so the, the debt is looking better. The annual deficit, I mean, is looking better. Which is, you know, not great in my mind, but that's okay. And, ooh, construction board. Good. Back in business. More stability. Yes, please. Now that the whales is back under control, our military and government appear to be a lot stronger than they did before. We can now turn our attention to, on to more relevant parts of the world. Thatcher's one step closer to reuniting the Isle. England is now ready to begin retaking its proper position on the international scene, and we're going to end today's episode there because we have spent very long in this episode. But I most, most importantly, though, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, like I said, normally. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall hopefully get through these monetarism reforms and watch the, o the world burn and die because of the lack of oil. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.